Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can make a, a sprint animation for your character, where the character can sprint in a straight line uh, to the left and also to the right. Uh, the character can also, um, it's got a sprinting animation when it's holding a weapon, uh, which is different for the uh, the pistol and the, the assault rifle's got a different one again. Um, you can also, yeah, obviously run without a weapon holstered, you can jump in and out of, um, of the running state and yeah. Um, so this is all done using animation rigging and root motion uh, mostly. Cool, so yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so this video follows on from a previous video, the Unity Animated Character Controller with root motion. Um, so in the scene, I've got a character that can jump and it's using a character controller behind the scenes. Um, and the thing that I'm gonna add in this tutorial is a, a sprinting state for the character. So when you press uh, left shift, basically, you can probably hear me doing that. <laughs> nothing, nothing happens. The character doesn't run. Um, so that'll be the, the first thing to hook up. Um, so the first step is um, open up the animator for the character. And there is one state here which is handling all of our locomotion. Um, it's the locomotion state. If you double click on that, there's a blend tree. And this has got the uh, forwards, backwards, left, right animations, um, which is yeah, handling all of our walking stuff. Um, so we just want to duplicate this whole blend tree and add it to like another sprinting state and then we'll just transition to and from this new blend tree and we'll just replace the uh, the forward animations with uh, sprinting animations. So what I wanted to do was basically just copy and paste um, that, that blend tree. That would be the quickest solution but unfortunately if you do that and then you click on the blend tree inside that state nothing appears in the inspector. And I think this is a bug in Unity. <clears throat> um, so instead, we've got to create this state uh, manually and we'll just copy all of those fields across. So the way to do this is just uh, right click, create state, new from blend tree, and then uh, just set the state name to like uh, sprinting, for example. And um, yeah, so this is gonna be a little bit fiddly. So um, what I'm gonna do is go into the locomotion state, set the blend tree, uh, and then lock the inspector. I'm now gonna drag the inspector over here just so I can copy all of this stuff into the, um, the new uh, sprinting state. So let me just get rid of that panel for a second to give me a bit more space. So yeah, I'm gonna go into the, is sprinting, uh, the sprinting state now and uh, open up a new inspector um, like this and just dock that over here. Okay, so now the, uh, the inspector on the left is the locomotion state and the inspector on the right is the sprinting state. Um, so the first thing to change is the blend type. Um, I'm actually going to use 2D freeform Cartesian. Just there's, there was a very minor difference, but I thought it looked a little bit better in the end result for sprinting. So yeah, you can play around with that stuff. Um, just set the parameters, input X and Y, and then just need to add nine different motion fields. So I'm just going to do that really quickly now. Cool, and the next step is actually just um, adding all of these animations across here. So I don't think I can just copy and paste. Oh, that does work, sweet, amazing. So yeah, you can just uh, left click, copy, right click, paste, oh, sorry. No, just left click, left click, paste. I think this is, uh, this is copying them correctly. I guess we'll see on this one. Cool, I had another method which I was gonna use, but uh, this is far superior. <laughs> I think this is uh, because of all that new copy paste stuff they added in 2020. Cool. Um, so yeah, now we've got all of these these motion fields. We just need to copy all of these uh, parameters down here. So I'm just going to do that like really quickly now. Cool. So these two things should now match. Um, <clears throat> So if we just come out of the, uh, the sprinting state, um, can close this inspector now, if I just close tab. Yeah, um, now we've got the locomotion state and the sprinting state. And if I go back into the sprinting, yeah, you can see all of those, uh, those properties that we just set up. Um, so now we just need to create a new transition between these two states here. Um, so just create a new transition, one from locomotion to sprinting and back, and then select the transition and uh, we're going to need a new, um, let me unhide that, a new parameter to actually trigger this transition. So I'm just going to create a new boolean parameter called like is sprinting. And yeah, 
You definitely want to deselect has exit time because this transition should not happen automatically. Um, and then instead add a condition, uh, which is going to be is sprinting uh, true. And then I'm just going to set the duration for the, the transition to be something fairly quick, like 0.1. And just yeah, do the reverse going back the other way. So is sprinting should be false going back in this direction. Cool. And the last thing is actually just setting this is sprinting uh, animation parameter from script when we press the left shift key. So just select the character, open the character locomotion script, and um, I'm going to create a new function called like update is sprinting. And if you just like uh, put your cursor over the middle of it, um, it does, there is no function called update is sprinting right now, but we can generate one by holding alt and then pushing enter and that will bring up the auto generate method uh, menu and then just push enter again and that will then generate uh, the new method um, for us which is a little bit quicker. Okay so to check if we are sprinting we just need to check if the um, oops is sprinting just check if the uh, left shift key is down so use uh, get key rather than uh, get key down just because uh, this will tell us each frame if it's sprinting uh, sorry if it's held down or not can't talk today <coughs> um, cool so now we've got the sprinting and now we just need to set the um, boolean animation parameter um, is sprinting to that value there and <coughs> the last thing is just because this has been called um, every frame it's uh, it's kind of not a good practice to actually pass a string in here because this is actually creating garbage so you can actually save this string out into um, a an integer there's there's basically two overloaded methods for set bool one that takes an int and the other that takes a string the one that takes an int is a uh, it's it doesn't generate as much garbage or any garbage I hope um, so to do that just need to create another private field called like is sprinting param and it's pretty easy, you just use string to hash and then pass in that string that you were using. And now you can just use this integer value in place of the string here. Cool, um, so ideally I would actually convert all of these uh, to be like that, but yeah, I'm not gonna do that in this tutorial. <laughs> cool, um, so now I just wanna test all of this out. Um, if I drag the animator to the bottom of the screen, then we should be able to actually view the locomotion and sprinting states and watch the character go between them. So yeah, the character is in the locomotion state now. If I hold down shift, it's now in the sprinting state. Um, if I release shift, it goes back to the locomotion state. Um, all the animations are identical, so there's, it doesn't look any different. There is like a small glitch, um, but that should be not noticeable once we change some of the animations. Okay, cool. Okay, so now I just want to open up the uh, sprinting state and um, replace this, uh, this top middle node with a sprint animation. Um, so the sprint animation I'm going to use just comes from the, um, the standard assets characters pack. Um, it's called uh, sprint forwards, so you can just do it, drag it in manually or just use the search box and hit enter. Um, so this should be enough to get the character to sprint in a straight line. Um, cool. So yeah, if I hold down shift, the character now starts sprinting um, and can use the mouse to change the direction. But you'll notice that if I, um, I'm just going to close this animator window for a second, it's a little bit easier to see. Yeah, if I sprint forwards and then hold down like left and right, the character kind of just starts walking in a um, diagonal line and it's the same animation that we're using for walking. So we just need to replace this top left and top right. Um, and I don't actually have a sprint forwards left and sprint forwards right, but what you can do is select sprint forwards and click edit and then um, you can actually add new animations from, from this animation clip. Um, so I'm just going to add another one called uh, Sprint Forwards Left. And we just want to copy all of the parameters from the Sprint Forwards animation. So it's got all of these checkboxes ticked, um, cycle offset 0.9, yada yada. Um, so just check all this stuff, 0.9 check these so bake the pose um, and the the rotation pose and the position that just means the root motion won't 
wobble all over the show. And but for the offset, um, I'm going to put in 20, and this is an offset of 20 degrees in the rotation. So you can see that the character is now running uh, forwards and to the left. Um, so if I change that to minus 20, the character runs the other way. Um, so that is good for the sprint left, and we just want to basically do the same again for the um, the sprint right. So if we just hit plus and then create a new one called sprint right, and need to check all these parameters again, put 0.9 for the cycle offset, check those boxes, and now it's going to be minus 20, and can just double check that. Yeah, so the character is sprinting forwards and to the right. Cool, so last thing is just hit apply. And you can see it's now created um, two additional animation clips here. So if we just open, uh, um, sorry, open back up the animator and go into the sprinting state, select the blend tree, and now click the top left node. Uh, this will highlight the motion field down here. Select that and just type in sprint forwards left. And now select the top right node. Um, you find the animations highlighted here and then just type sprint forwards right. Um, so we can actually preview this stuff in the blend tree by moving this um, this little thingy around. So that's forwards and to the left, uh, forwards and to the right. Um, but if I go forwards into the left, sorry, yeah, um, the character is now running backwards. And that's just because of the animation that we were using um, before it needed to be reversed. So so this one here should just be not reversed anymore. So now we can uh, go forwards, right, left. Cool, that looks all good. Um, so if I just pause that, close that, hit play. <clears throat> and now if I sprint in a straight line and then hold down right, you can see the character now uh, sort of goes to the right, release and to the left, and then it will sprint to the left. Cool, so um, the next thing is just adding jumping. So if I add, if I jump, uh, the character just remains in this running state. So let's add that now. Cool, so this step should be pretty easy. Um, just open up the uh, third person character controller, and then uh, we just need to create a transition from is sprinting to jumping. Um, basically the same way we do for locomotion, just when is jumping is true. So select that, um, deselect has exit time, I want the jump interval to basically be the same as what it is here. Yeah, 0.1. And then just add a new parameter. Sorry, a new condition is jumping is true. Cool, so we can now just test all of this out. Yeah, so if I'm running and then I jump, the character goes into the jump, I land. Yeah, and even if I have shift held down, it automatically goes back into the, the running state. Um, so one thing that you could also do um, which I'm not going to cover is um, you could speed up the animation for the um, the sprinting state in the blend tree. Oh, maybe I can just quickly show you. <laughs> uh, if you select this animation here, you can actually like speed up how fast it's playing. And because we're using root motion, that will automatically um, speed up how fast the character actually moves in real life. Well, <laughs> simulated life. Um, yeah. So. Cool, okay, um, so the next step is actually, that's pretty much all it is, all it is for uh, for the sort of um, running part of the character when, when it doesn't have a weapon. Um, but when the character does have a weapon, um, it kind of looks okay, but I just want the character to sort of put, put the gun down or just sort of go into a different pose with the, uh, the weapon while the character is sprinting. So we'll just add that now. So just need to open up the um, the rig controller here because this has got all of our weapon stuff in it. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit hairy. I'd like to refactor this stuff later, but I uh, found an easy way. Just create a new layer and then um, just call this like running or I guess sprinting layer. And all we need to do is just uh, create a new empty state. Whoa, why is it all the way over there? Create a new empty state, which basically just uh, like not sprinting. <laughs> And then um, you can just create a new, another state off that called like sprinting, create a transition. And now we just need to make a, another parameter on this um, because it's a different animator. We just need to create that Boolean parameter again, called like is sprinting. Um, and 
just deselect has exit time set the duration to 0 0.1 uh, set the condition is sprinting to true it's just everything all the same stuff that we did for the other one um, so deselect has ex exit time 0 0.1 and is, sprint is sprinting is false cool so we just need to actually create an animation uh, for the sprinting state for the um, the weapon part of the character uh, so I'm just going to create a new animation clip right there um, and I'll call this like weapon sprinting oh yeah weapon sprinting actually I'm going to call it like weapon rifle sprinting because we might want a different animation for a pistol versus a rifle um, so just drag that animation clip into the is sprinting state and now if I go into play mode um, you can actually just go into the, the scene oh, let me get a weapon first Oh, <laughs> that's a bit weird. Uh, okay, go into the scene and now go into the rig controller. Um, open this up and where can I put this? Down here? Oh no, sorry, I want the animator up. Animation window? This one, yeah. And yeah, select the rig controller and now we should be able to select the weapon rifle sprinting and hit record and the node that we can change without mucking anything up is this pivot node um, so if I just do this don't know yeah I'm not really sure what the best gonna look for sprinting with a weapon is um, maybe something like this cool um, maybe a little bit closer in I'm not really sure. I have to play around with that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that. So now we just need to actually set the, um, the is sprinting property on this rig controller. So we'll just do it in the same place that we were doing it for the main character. Um, except this time uh, when we set is sprinting here, we just want to do this on the rig controller rather than the animator. Um, so we can't get that because it's not on the same game object so I'm just going to create a new uh, public property I'll put it at the top here called animator rig controller yeah like that and then should be able to sign that in the inspector yeah so this rig controller just assign that here and now if we go back to the scripts we can just do exactly what we were doing before um, and just call rig controller dot set bull and we can use the same um, parameter ID uh, just because it is so long as you call the parameter exactly the same name in both animators then you can use the same the same integer value there okay um, so I think all of that should work let's test it out so if I grab a weapon and then start sprinting okay nothing happened um, and I think I know why um, by default when you add a new layer um, into an animator then the weight is set to zero by default yeah cool so now the character just points the gun to the ground you could al almost like play around with different timings for these like maybe make that take 0 0.2 seconds 0 0.2 the other way and if we test that out, ah, sorry, it resets everything. Turn the weight back up. Yeah, cool. So that's uh, that's looking pretty good. You can still jump, and if I jump and then let go of shift, the character brings the weapon back up, which may not be to your liking, but I think it actually looks quite cool. Um, feels quite cool just having some extra piece of animation happening when you uh, when you hold down the shift key. Cool. Uh, and just make sure to set the um, the layer weight to one after you come out of game mode. Um, cool. So now there's uh, just a, like ton of sort of annoying little bugs to fix. Like if I get a weapon and then I'm sprinting and I start shooting, um, it doesn't look right. So in that case, I just want the character to stop sprinting if it if it starts shooting. Um, it seems a bit unfair to allow sprinting and shooting at the same time. So just open up the character locomotion script. 
and rather than um, just checking if the, the left shift key is down, I'm going to move this stuff into a function um, and that function is just going to check if we are sprinting and there'll be like a few other conditions. Um, one of them will be the, the shift key here. So if I just copy paste that, I could probably do this with like refactoring tools, but I still need to learn them. Um, so yeah, is sprinting. So next thing, yeah, we just want to check um, basically if we are firing a weapon. And to do that, we need to get reference to the, um, the active weapon script. So just create a new um, property up here. It's on the same game object as the character locomotion script. Um, so we can just get that inside start calling uh, active weapon equals get component active weapon cool <clears throat> um, so we just need to add a function on the active weapon to tell us if we are firing uh, so i'm just going to create a new function sort of anywhere just called like public ball is firing and first we just need to check if we have an active weapon um, so we can just do that by going raycast weapon equals sorry current weapon equals get active weapon and if we don't have an active weapon if we don't have an active weapon then just return false um, so that'll be in the case where the weapon is holstered or there is no weapon equipped um, otherwise we just return the current weapon dot is firing so each individual weapon has got their own is firing state already so yeah we can just use that in here cool um, so if we go back to the character locomotion scripts now we can just use that inside here inside the is sprinting function so just check is firing equals active weapon dot is firing and now we just return um, if we are sprinting and just also check that we're not firing and then yeah so this will only return true if uh if we're sprinting and we're not firing then this will become true and then the animator will be correctly set into the sprinting state so we can just uh, quickly test that out if i just um close these animation windows now hit play grab a weapon and start sprinting and if I start shooting you can see the character now just goes back into the walking state um, yeah which is pretty cool <laughs> you probably just saw that uh, where the character if the character reloads while um, while sprinting then it looks pretty stupid as well so um, we just need to basically extend that as sprinting function to also include if the character is reloading um, so we'll just do that now so yeah, just open up the character locomotion scripts and inside is sprinting. Um, we just need to check if we are reloading. So all of the reloading logic is done inside the reload weapon script, um, which doesn't currently have any kind of state if we're reloading or not. So just need to create a new public ball is reloading. And then um, just when we start reloading here, when we set the reload parameter, just set that to true. And then when the magazine is attached, this is actually not perfect because there are still a few frames after this happens before the gun is fully aimed, but this is gonna do for now. Um, is reloading, just set that to false once the magazine is attached. So now, um, inside the character locomotion script uh, we just need to get a reference to the uh, reload weapon scripts reload weapon and let me just double check that is on the same game object yeah so character locomotion reload weapon yeah, it's on the same object and we've got this new property here that we can read from um, so yeah just inside is sprinting just check bull is reloading is reloading Ah, uh, I think I can, uh, can I rename that? Oh, it's not a function. It's just a property. Cool, so yeah, just check that we lift, uh, lift shift gears down and we are not firing and we are not reloading. Then we can go into the sprinting state. So just test that out now. Uh oh, uh, 
I think I um yeah it's a null reference exception. I forgot to uh, actually call get component here. Get component uh, reload weapon. Is that right? Did I spell that wrong? Get component. Oh man, I'm trying to type too fast. <laughs> cool. Okay, so yeah, if I start sprinting, start shooting, and I'm just gonna hold down the trigger this whole time. Yeah, and you can see that the character never goes back into the sprinting state. Um, yeah, even if I start sprinting like midway through, yeah, it only uh, goes to the sprinting state once it's finished reloading. Cool, um, so I think that is pretty much it, or there might be one other thing. Yeah, it's like when you holster the weapon while you're sprinting, everything goes a bit crazy as well. So um, I'm just gonna also add one last piece, which is <laughs> in here, no, sorry, in the, um, that is sprinting, just also check like uh, is changing weapon. And to do that, I think um, all of that stuff is on the active weapon script. This is the script that is changing our weapons. Um, so we can just add, I guess, yeah, like another another function here. Um, uh, it's probably actually better to create another piece of state called like is changing weapon. You can probably initialize that to false just to be sure. Um, I think that's the default value. Whoops. So I'll just leave it like that. Yeah, cool. Um, so is firing, get active weapon. So I think there's there's two coroutines, one for setting the active weapon and uh, switching weapon and holstering weapon. Yeah, these two here, holster weapon and activate weapon. So once we, um, when we start holstering a weapon, we could set that to true. And once we're finished, we can set it back to false. And that will catch the case where we're putting our weapon away. Um, and the other case is basically the opposite down here for when we activate the weapon. It's changing weapon. Yeah, cool. So inside character locomotion, now we can just call like active weapon dot is changing weapon like that. And now I think when we change weapon, the character will also stop sprinting. Nope, <laughs> that doesn't look right at all. I must have got around the wrong way. I didn't even use it. So, and we're not changing weapon. Cool, yeah, so when, when the character puts the weapon away um, and stops sprinting, and yeah, slows down. So I was going to end that video there, but I forgot to um, show how to actually create a different um, sprinting animation for the pistol. Um, so currently when, when you sprint with the pistol, um, it just doesn't quite look like uh, what the character should be doing. I want the pistol to um, basically be above the shoulder and the character sort of running with one, one arm free. Uh, instead of doing what's happening right now. So um, I'm just going to create a new animation here, which is going to be called weapon pistol sprinting and just going to set this up in much the same way that we did the weapon rifle sprinting. Um, so just open up the uh, rig controller of the, the character. This is where all the animations for sprinting stuff is. Um, so yeah, we've got this not sprinting state. I'm just going to rename the sprinting state to be a bit more, more specific. So it's going to be called weapon rifle sprinting and just uh, yeah, basically set up the pistol in exactly the same way. So create the, um, the transitions back and forth. Um, so no exit time 0 0.2. Um, so no exit time 0 0.2. And then the condition should be the sprinting to true going this way and same thing again, but as sprinting is false, going back to the not sprinting state. Cool. So um, 
We've got these two different animations now, but uh, it doesn't know how to play each of them because the condition is identical. So I think Unity will just probably pick this one, um, the first one. So um, we just need to create a new uh, animation parameter, which is going to store the weapon index of the currently active weapon. And then we'll use this um, inside the condition field to just check that we're sprinting and the weapon index is equal to zero, which is the primary weapon slot. And then for this one, just do a similar thing. Um, the weapon index, but instead of zero, we're just going to check that it's equal to one. So this this transition from not sprinting to the rifle sprinting is zero, and then not sprinting to the pistol sprinting um, has got a condition of weapon index equals one. So now we just need to actually set that weapon index um, parameter from the active weapon script. Um, so yeah, inside the um, switch weapon function, um, we can just on the just called rig controller dot set integer uh, weapon index and use that activate index. Cool. So now um, when we enter the the sprinting state, it should um, depending if we've got the pistol or the rifle equipped, it will either enter the state or the state. Um, so the last thing is actually just creating that pistol animation. So I need to open up the animation window and I'll just dock this down here. Um, I'll go into play mode just because I find it's much easier to author animations if you can see them live um, what, how they're gonna look so um, just yeah select the rig controller um, select the weapon pistol sprinting and I'll just hit record so the first thing I'm going to do is actually turn off the hand IK on the left arm so the left arm will be free and it will follow the running animation and then uh, for the right arm I'm just going to change that location of the, the weapon pivot so I'm just going to bring it um, back and up and then twist it a little bit and probably bring it out twist it somewhat like that just try to make it like look cool I guess <laughs> um, yeah something like that maybe a little bit still slightly too close to the face yeah something like that probably looks okay so I could probably fiddle with this all day no. okay cool yeah they'll do and yeah so if I come out of this and go into the game mode so now if I run let me just close this animation window if I run ah, it's still playing I think I might have to just yeah, I don't think those animation parameters would have been set, so I have to just relaunch the game mode. So if I grab the pistol and then I run, awesome. Man, it looks so cool. And it's like kind of bobbles about, like as you'd expect. It looks like really good, I think, for just a single keyframe. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And uh, the next thing to test is just that the rifle plays that same animation. And then when we switch, Cool, yeah, so now each weapon has got their own sprinting animation, which I think is really important because uh, if you have like a massive sniper rifle or something, you're gonna sprint much differently to how, how you have a pistol in your hand. So I think this is key to making your game look good. Cool, um, and there are there is like a, one more bug, which I noticed um, if I'm sprinting and then I start shooting it just looks like absolutely terrible <laughs> so what I'm gonna do in the short term is just um, not allow sprinting uh, sorry not allow the weapon to update or shoot while we are in that sprinting state um, so inside the rig controller let me just show you what I'm talking about what's happening is uh, we're sprinting and we when we uh, start shooting we turn off this parameter and we start transitioning back but uh, we don't wait for the transition to happen before we start shooting so the character's arm and stuff is still coming back and then we start shooting and the recoil sort of kicks in around here and it just looks like a mess so instead I'm just gonna wait until uh, we're completely in this not sprinting state before um, we're allowed to shoot again um, so inside the active weapon script this should be relatively easy um, just where we update the weapon uh, we can now just check like if we're in that state so bull not sprinting um, Oops, not sprinting equals uh, rig controller dot get current animation state and we can use the short name hash so that will be equivalent to sorry let me just get this there'll be the short name hash will just be this uh, this hash name here not sprinting um, 
oh sorry i need to give it a layer so that'll be layer two so that's like layer zero one two the sprinting layer um, so get the current uh, short name hash and I'm going to compare this. I need to just create a new uh, string to hash uh, and I'll call this, um, yeah, not sprinting. Like that. Cool. I probably should actually store this in a parameter, but I'm just going to not do that for now. And the last thing is just check um, that we're not sprinting before we try to update the weapon. And that will completely block any sort of uh, weapon firing stuff to happen while we're sprinting, which is okay for my game, um, but it may not be for yours. So sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so now if, I, um, if I'm sprinting and I start to shoot, nothing happens. And yeah, so this is a quick fix um, for this video. Yeah. Cool, um, so that is it for reels now. Um, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please hit subscribe and like. And if you wanna see more content, make sure to hit that bell notification icon. Um, I've got tons of new tutorials coming up, but uh, first I just wanna finish this series. So there's a couple of things left. I think um, one of the things I really wanna do is add scoping, so a little bit of zoom when you um, right click. Um, and also some kind of crouching or crawling um, and I think that'll probably be it for this series um, and then I'm going to start looking into things like AI animation and hopefully networking um, but I'll probably cover AI next I think because um, that will just keep things interesting cool okay well yeah uh, thanks for watching if you've made it to the end really appreciate it and um, yeah uh, we'll see you again in the, the next episode Okay, uh, ka kite, see ya, bye.